Hello everybody, this is B-U-Z-Z Buzz here with another Clash Royale replay. Today we're doing a very special all new TV Royale best of where I'm just going to do, I think the best replays, you know, I'm just going to do what I want basically and how I want it. And today I'm going to start us off here with an Expo deck. Yeah, you thought the Expo deck was dead? Absolutely not, as it's rampaging through that seven cost barbarian hut. Already well worth it. Belfast, our sorry, Betfast Expo. That is the name of our blue player. He's gonna feel very good about that, especially since he was able to stop that cannon car from getting too close to the tower there. A clutch ice spirit. I don't know how she was able to jump, honestly, but she was able to jump. That fast is versus the red player whose name I simply cannot pronounce, but this replay is super popular. Oh my goodness, that Expo locking on the left side. Not gonna feel good about that. Our red player is probably cheese. This replay has 44,000 views, which makes it actually, I think the second most popular replay right now on Clash Royale is TV Royale because uh, it's just how it rolls, you know, but honestly, I just want to go in No particular order. I'm just gonna do the most watched replay. So you're gonna get The top five for sure, but at the same time guys, I just I mean You know, I just want to do more replays I don't want to just do the top three sometimes I want to do top five sometimes I want to do the top three who knows who knows how I'm feeling? This expo on the left side is gonna plow through these barbarians, trying to make their way towards the right side. The sweaty barbarians facing the ever dry and not sweaty skeletons because I just don't know if skeletons sweat. I'm pretty sure skeletons don't sweat. That would be so weird if skeletons sweated, wouldn't it? I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, guys, it would be very strange. We do have a super extra ultra. Defensive posturing here from Betfast as he has to defend against his Golem coming in. Golem is super strong. My sound is absolutely bonkers right now. Once again, it is like a disco in here, a 1970s disco party with the music in the background. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love the Clash Royale music. It's super hype, super exciting. This expo will once again lay waste to a seven cost barbarian hut. Why does our red player put it there? I don't know. But he is in a really bad position. It's the first time he's done damage to the tower and he had to use a poison for it. Meanwhile, <clears throat> we do have some extra super defensive posturing here once again from Bedfast. It looks like this game will have to be taken into overtime and probably into a tiebreaker. Unfortunately, as uh, Betfast is unable to penetrate the defense of our red player, which is very interesting to me. Look, he puts the Barbarian Hut, which I just don't understand why. Like, look, it's about to get destroyed here. Oh, maybe, no, why didn't you just put the Golem? Like, I don't understand. I truly, truly don't understand the thought process of our our red yeah i just don't get what the red player is trying to do here but now he's able to deal with that night witch with a fireball lock combination we do have skeletal dragons moving in from the middle here for red player as he tries to to, to penetrate the defense of betfast betfast very fortunate able to penetrate the left side with a uh, quite a bit of damage actually from the expo earlier on in the game Red player let that slide, and I think it's about to cost him as we have entered the 50 second mark here of overtime. Not much time left here for our red player to try and make something happen. As, but you know what? Look at the tower damage, it's actually pretty close 2700 on that left side tower, 2200 on his own tower. He does have 40 seconds. I don't know if the golem will actually have enough time to make it up there in 40 seconds. Perhaps he should have put it more closer up. It's already been 10 seconds, the golem has not yet reached the bridge. We'll see what happens. We have Skeletal Dragons once again moving down the middle. They will immediately get fireballed. We do have a Tesla Expo combination to drag the golem. He certainly will not penetrate with 15 seconds left on that clock. A lot of damage coming in here from the left side, but Betfast will immediately fireball that uh, cannon card does fall. 
into cannon position. Unfortunately, unable to target the tower, but this game is so close to poison. Will it do enough damage here? 2100 left on the left side, 22 on the left side for Belfast, or Betfast, I should say. And this game came down to overtime tiebreaker. Unfortunately, for our red player, he was unable to take that game. Betfast is in clan Clash of Lakers, by the way, which is becoming a very popular clan. I have not seen it until recently, and I've been seeing a lot of replays about them. So, let's see what happens. Game number two underway, another Expo deck. I gotta say, I gotta say, a lot of Expo decks happening right now. I don't know what else to say about it, but we're gonna put this one in the double elixir and see what happens here. We do have Expo versus Motar, so we'll see what happens here. The Motar Goblin deck is a super, super, it's a little bit too fast. <laughs> it's a super um, high pressure deck. Very low cost cards, but also effective cost cards. And the thing about it is it puts a lot of pressure on both lanes. We'll see if our red player is able to handle it. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce these guys in the bottom blue. Wow, another guy from Clash of Lakers. We have FMC Thunderboy in the top red. We have Hunter in Clan OMG Legends. Not to be confused with OMG Legends, which is a clan I don't know whether or not exists. But, nonetheless, this Expo has been placed on the left side, trying to get some damage in here for Hunter, but he is met with a Motar, and surprisingly, a Firecracker that was able to survive to do some two shots here on the left side tower. Absolutely astronomical, if you ask me. We do have a Goblin Skeletal Barrel attack coming in. Uh, an interesting play there, forcing a Tornado and an Ice Wizard, which actually ended up a bit more costing a bit more thunderboy was that his call so the skeletal barrel is three and then the goblins are two so that was a five cost to a three cost defense uh, very interesting for a hunter as he's forced to use the ice wizard as well as a tornado i'm not really sure what else he could use but this firecracker is absolutely menacing She's able to do a lot of damage. Both of these towers are getting there, getting pretty low there for Thunderboy as he's able to do a lot of damage to his opponent here. Hunter, once again, trying to penetrate that left side tower. He does throw the Expo down. It is supported by uh, Ice Wizard. It's not enough as uh, Thunderboy is now on the counter attack. Thunderboy holding it down for boys everywhere. He is the Thunder. Are you the Fireboy? I don't know. Thunderboy. <laughs> he's even got the Thunder symbol in his name. <laughs> Uh, that is pretty cool if you ask of me. He put a firecracker perfect positioning there to maximize the AOE on her. Unfortunately, she only gets two shots off before getting decimated. Hunter forcing a tornado there. We do have a huge attack here on the right side. Will that skeletal barrel connect or will it be dragged? It is dragged, but it will actually take out that Tesla tower. As this Mordar does lock on to a defensive Expo, a Fireball once again coming down here might actually be enough here to take out the Expo. As long as that Knight can get the slice off, he does. Will we get a retarget here from the Mortar? We do. It actually will be really bad here for Hunter as he does rock at the left side. I don't really know about that move. He does tornado the right side, incoming attack here, but he does have a lot to deal with. He's going to be forced to use more cards, deciding not to. As what do I know? He is an better calculator than me I'll just be honest here Thunderboy deciding to pressure the left side we are in overtime double elixir which as you guys already know I don't have to say it over and over again do I anything could happen 500 damage left on that left side tower I think it's definitely going down here for Thunderboy able to take the game I don't know why Hunter postured that expo on the left on the right side I think it might have been a misclick to be honest with you but that is game number two we're heading into game number three Game number three underway. I promise, guys, this is not going to be another Expo deck, um, but it is going to be another OMG Legends clan, as these guys and the other guys are seemingly dominating the TV Royale scene. In the bottom blue, we have O.S. Wallace and his opponent. In the top red, we have Parker... <laughs> Parker the Boss 2. Not to be confused with Parker the Boss 1. 
as that is his predecessor. <laughs> For all I know. We do have a Siege Giant, Royal Giant, coming down the left side here. <clears throat> he is supported with a Healing Sprite. The Healing Sprite doing its darnest to heal him up. We do have Barbarian support here with Electro Wizard. The Electro Wizard is zapping away here. Electricity! He's sending pulses of electricity, making his opponent both much more intelligent and also much more likely to die as the electricity, um, for some reason in my head, makes people smarter. Um, yeah, we're not going to question it. We have skeletons on the left side here for the defense of Wallace as he does have a Lava Hound deck to deal with. Parker the boss is going the traditional route. He does fireball the uh, hunter and zap. I was going to say the fireball is definitely not enough to kill him, but the zap was. It did cost six elixir to do that, but he was able to do a lot of damage to that rise tide tower, and I don't honestly know if he even needed that, um, what's it called, the balloon. To be honest with you guys, ah, I wish I had a, a rewind button because I don't know if that balloon connected. But it had to have connected considering the amount of damage done to that tower. There's no way a lava hound does that much damage, guys. It just does not happen. We are one minute left, which means double elixir. Absolutely anything can happen. Here we go. We got a fisherman in this deck. Very interesting choice. Forcing, by the way, that fire, that uh, healing sprite to blow up on the fisherman and not the royal giant not an ideal situation but that royal giant is able to take the game here or sorry that left side tower that is for os wallace as he is now in a dominating lead parker the boss has to do as much damage as he can to that right side tower but i don't know if he has what it takes here he does send the balloon the balloon is making its way towards the tower i don't think it's going to connect though he does use everything he's got the electro wizard will stop that balloon for sure i don't think even the bomb is going to hit it yeah not even the bomb is going to hit it i don't think parker's got this game guys He's got 20 seconds left on that clock, and even if he's able to send in a bomb from the balloon with a fireball, it still wouldn't be enough, but we'll see what he does here. He does have a Lava Hound making its way. The fireball does come down, and now, my friends, is a GG as Parker Dabas does throw a fireball at the King Tower, signifying that he has given up. Game number three has finished. We're hitting... Oh, this replay had 36... Thousand views, I believe it was 36. Yeah, we're heading into game number three. Game number three, I mean, game number four underway here. A miner coming in, we're gonna speed her up just a little bit here. You know what I'm saying? We got Sparky here for our red player as the prince makes his way down the right side. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce these guys in the bottom blue. We have Kamikaze 007 in the top red. We have Jackie Moon. This is a crazy attack here. The Goblin Giant is connected to Death Tower. He's doing so much damage. We have a Mega Minion doing the defense that he can, even with the Electro Wizard coming in. He was able to stop the damage and able to do a counter attack here of his own. He's gonna do a lot of damage. Yeah, that Prince able to connect it. Jackie's got nothing to deal with that. The Prince is gonna do so good here for Kamikaze. That double lane push is gonna put a lot of pressure, even if that musketeer which by the way did an astounding amount of damage even if that musketeer did connect it still won't work out fireball coming in here for support the fireball does kill the skeletal dragons which means that this royal giant will go to town on that right side tower and guarantee the victory for sure the electro wizard will come down but not before it gets zapped to death i mean sliced to death by that mini pekka mini pekka and Sparky combination is absolutely devastating. I gotta say, that is the, what I'm going for right now. I kind of want Jackie Moon's deck, actually. It's a very good deck. Actually, I should go for that deck. Except for the Skeletal Dragons. I don't know about that, but he's got a super strong deck here. I might use the Miner instead and Bats instead of Healing Sprite. That's what I would go for. The Fireball does come down on top of the Musketeer and that Mini Pack. I might even use the Dark Goblin instead of that Musketeer, to be honest with you. Other than that though, it's a savage deck, super strong. Kamikaze does send the Prince to the right side to try and distract as he does try to penetrate that left side. He sent the Prince to the right side as he tries to penetrate the left side. Super good strategy, the fireball will guarantee him that left side. What are you doing, Kamikaze? What? What? Kamikaze giving this game away by throwing a defensive fireball instead of an... Why would you... I just... 
Guys, Fireballs most certainly would have done the damage that it needed to do. I am so confused. Kamikaze might have not seen that, but unfortunately, he definitely could have evened this game out and gone for the triple tower. But he went for a defensive fireball. That is blowing my mind right now. Woo! Um, this replay had actually a little bit less than the other ones. It had 33,000. We're going to do one more. And our final replay. This is going to be super exciting. I just saw these guys' decks and I thought, oh my goodness, this one's going to be super exciting. We have a Sparky, kind of similar deck to what, no, not at all similar. It's a Sparky Giant Mini P.E.K.K.A. deck versus a Expo deck. This is going to be super exciting. I'm pretty sure Red Player is going to counter the Expo deck, but I really want to see what our Blue Player is able to do with this Expo and see what he could do to counter the Giant, to counter the Sparky, to counter the Fireball and the three spells that our red player has, but nonetheless, that expo does lock on to the left side tower. It's gonna guarantee a lot of damage here, and you guys might think, oh, 200 is not a lot. That's a lot of damage. <sighs> Woo. Okay, this replay has 30,000 views. In the bottom blue, we have Rhyme, and his opponent in the top red with the fancy schmancy font. His name is Shadowless Man, and these guys are no joke. They are here for victory and absolutely nothing else. Tornado on top of the knight, a very interesting choice there. I think um, Shadow knew that he was about to lose the giant, so he needed to guarantee the damage on top of that expo because he did not want to take any damage on his right side tower. But anyway, that's just a theory. We do have a mini Becca coming down the left, the right side, excuse me. And he does have a healing sprite with him. That will guarantee that he slices up both of these. But not before falling to the Prince's Tower. His armor turns out not the strongest. This is an unbelievable play here. Shadowless does not have enough Elixir to deal with this. And he's about to take so much damage. In fact, he might even lose this tower. No. Okay, I, honestly, I don't understand how he's this far behind in the Lexer. I think it was that mini P.E.K.K.A. healing sprite play. It did cost him five to do that, and he got nothing, truly nothing from it. He did slice up two archers, but at the cost of five, and like, really, that was nothing for Rhyme. Rhyme is now having to deal with this giant coming on the left side as he did play the Expo. I had a good time. I had a good time there. I had a really good time. The, but he does have a Sparky to deal with on the right side. He could easily deal with that. He does have skeletons. He did not place them around the Sparky like he should have. But he also does have an Ice Spirit. He also does have uh, the other guy. Ice Golem. Doesn't he have an Ice Golem? I guess not. He He's using a Knight instead of an Ice Golem. I was wondering. I'm like, doesn't he? Isn't he supposed to have an Ice Golem? Wow, he's absolutely destroying Shadowless, man. I thought Shadowless was going to have this no problem, but Rhyme is going to take this game no problem, even without a log. Oh, he does have log. Yeah, he's got this in the bag. GG. Shadowless, I kind of think he got this game away. I'm just going to be honest with you, but it is what it is. That's going to be our final game, guys. Thank you for watching. And if you want to continue watching, I'm going to go ahead and try to pronounce this guy's clan name. For the next few seconds here, we have Quetzalgiti. Quite Quetzalgi. Quetzal. Quetzal. Quetzag. Quetzalgit. Quetzal. 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 Quetzalik. Ooh, I like that one. Quetzalik. I am from Quetzalik. I am from Clan Quetzalik. I am from Clan. Qu How do you spell that, sir? Oh, it is. Yuck. I'm sorry. I don't know, guys. I just like to play around. Oh, 29 trophies for our blue player rhyme. And that is our final game. I believe that's five games. Thank you for watching if you made it this far. If you are a Clash Royale, you're awesome. Subscribe down below. Support the Clash the community. A lot of people are haters of this game. I'm just going to be honest, guys. But... We have to show them that this game is actually super fun. They don't know what they're talking about. And honestly, they're probably not that great at this game. You know, it's not easy to play a game where you have to go one versus one against someone else. A lot of people are very team oriented and, you know, we're a special breed. That's all I'm going to say about it. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Skippity-doop-bop down below. I appreciate you. 
And I will see you in the next replay.